Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title well today, we are going to be talking about Rishma. So since these financial reports have been released, we've been talking about what's been going on at LVMH, the decline at caring, the hype around Mew Mew, Hermes's sustained growth, and I was questioned about Rishma. So I thought in today's video we'll talk about it. In addition, we will talk about what's going on with Bernard Arnault and his potential interest in Rishma, as well as just the state of a lot of these luxury brands in general. Rishma is a very different type of conglomerate because it's primarily a jewelry and watch heavy conglomerate. They do fashion, they do leather goods. When you look at the revenue, as well as the type of brands that Rishma is invested in, it's mainly watches and jewelry. So the report states that sales up at a 1% constant exchange rates, down 1% at actual exchange rates. We are seeing a lot of luxury brands really going down in revenue. Rishma as a whole, as a conglomerate, much like LVMH overall, they've been able to maintain where they're at. They state all regions delivered growth except for the Asia Pacific, where sales contracted by 18% as higher sales in South Korea and Malaysia only partially mitigated a 27% decline in China, Hong Kong, and Macau combined. They cite low-level consumer confidence, and I think this is something we are seeing across the board. Europe, the sales increased by 5% driven by resilient local demand and tourist purchases. In the Americas, 10% sales progression reflected sustained domestic demand. In Japan, the strongest regional sales growth at 59%. The growth was fueled by demand domestic demand and thriving tourist spending from Chinese, South Korean, and Southeast Asian and American clients favored by the weakened yen. And Middle East and Africa rose 8% from growing domestic and tourist spending. We are actually seeing growth overall at Rishma, with the exception of the Asia Pacific region. But of course, the Asia Pacific region for a lot of these luxury brands is probably their biggest demographic. The brands that are faring the best in Asia Pacific are the ones that are actually experiencing growth. Be it sustained growth at Hermes, or in contrast, Miu Miu, totally different business model, totally different marketing strategy, but very much as a result of very targeted influencer, very strategic marketing campaigns. Miu Miu has done exceptionally well in Asia, as well as the rest of the world. Hermes is doing well in the rest of the world as well. Richemont we are seeing growth in other regions, but we are not seeing growth in this region. So when we look at it by distribution channel, we see retail, which is the bulk of their revenue, is up. Online retail is up by 6%. Wholesale and royalty income is down by 5%. And then when we break it down by business area, you will see the biggest section is their jewelry houses, then their specialist watchmakers, and then from there it's other, and they kind of group, be it fashion or shoe brands and other ventures in this category. But when we look at the jewelry maisons, they state the group's three jewelry maisons, Bucoletti, Cartier, and Van Cleef, delivered a 4% sales growth against demanding comparatives. Growth was supported by both jewelry and watches. All channels and regions posted higher sales except for wholesale and Asia Pacific. Now, when it comes to specialist watchmakers, they state sales at the specialist watchmakers declined by 13% as Japan's noteworthy performance only partially offset at lower sales in Europe and Asia Pacific, particularly in China, Hong Kong, and Macau combined. Of note was the resilience of Vacheron Constantine and A. Lang and Son, sorry if I mispronounced that. So while customers may be interested in jewelry, the demand for watches, or at least Rishma specialist watchmakers have declined here. I'm not too familiar with watches. I tried to research the slowdown of watches in China. I read this article from Jing Daily, demand for high-end Swiss watches in China has been crimped this year as consumers decrease or defer discretionary spending amid deceleration economic growth, high youth unemployment, and a teetering real estate market, or make big purchases in Japan. As a luxury category, watches also face competition from segments such as leather goods and jewelry, which are less affected by the slowdown. So it seems also that perhaps customers, if they want to treat themselves to something, they may not be investing in watches. They may choose to opt for a handbag or find jewelry. I was listening to this really great podcast, Fashion People. They talk about Richemont's selection of specialist watchmakers when put against the Rolexes or the Pateks. They may just not be as popular. There is a decline at least in the watchmakers at Richemont. But I also think Cartier is very known for their watches as well. Customers are more so going for just those more classic, well-known, well-established watch brands. If you know anything about the watch market, please let me know in the comment section below. 
And finally, in the other category, the group's other business area generated 6% sales increase underpinned by a double digit progression at Watch Finder and a 4% growth at the group's fashion and accessories houses, which included Gian Vito Rossi, consolidated since February 2024. The ongoing momentum of Alaya and Peter Miller broadly compensated for softer sales at most of the other houses, including Chloe, where the debut collection under the new creative director only reached doors at the end of the quarter under review. So I had to look into Watchfinder. This is an online retailer of secondhand watches. I also think this is another thing that is happening with luxury. In general, there is more of a boom in the secondhand market. This is something that has been acquired by Richma. Customers, if they're buying secondhand, may feel more confident. The secondhand market is only going to continue and continue to grow. In terms of Gianvito Rossi, that doesn't surprise me. Whenever I think about Gianvito Rossi, I think about how like the royals, they typically are wearing their very classic pumps and they have their classic pumps in an assortment of colors. They're not like logoed or branded. Alaya has also become very popular because of those. I would say on my social media, at least, I see those shoes everywhere. They are so popular. A lot of the cool girls are wearing those shoes. So yeah, definitely can see the popularity of Alaya. Peter Miller, I actually had to look up what this was. I, I wasn't too familiar with this, but it's an American brand that does sportswear and golf attire. And with Chloe, they just launched their collection. I did a whole video actually just looking at their recent drop, but they just launched their collection, I believe just like about a month ago. I think what we were seeing is mainly Gabriella Hurst's era, Chloe. They also pointed out how Uke's net porte YNAP presented as discontinued operations, posted a 15% sales reduction, both at constant and actual exchange rate. That's the report. Overall, what we are seeing at Richemont is their jewelry is doing pretty well, like specifically their Van Cleef's, the Cartier's, which makes sense at this point. Like when you think about if customers are holding back and they're just not wanting to buy in perhaps short term luxury goods and instead opt for a nice piece of fine jewelry, I think that totally makes sense. Fine jewelry is something that you can have and cherish and pass down generation to generation. Their specialist watchmakers haven't been as successful, but it is interesting to note how watch finder, and I think just this is reflective of the secondhand market in general, it is actually booming. And I think when we think about what's going on with luxury right now, we are seeing a stagnation or in some areas, severe drops, but there are pockets where the market is doing well. LVMH, we are seeing probably their best category of growth was actually in the realm of beauty, cosmetics, fragrances. Their operating stores like Sephora are doing quite well, which makes sense. They have a really good selection of beauty as well as they seem to be venturing more into that even at these luxury houses, be it Loewe, Celine, Louis Vuitton, Fendi, they all now have fragrance lines. And of course, Dior. Dior has a very popular line of fragrances as well as their beauty is very popular. Celine is just about to launch their beauty and I wouldn't be surprised if other LVMH brands do the same. I think more people are in a position where they may be able to buy perfume or buy a beauty product that and spending $4,000 on a handbag right now. At Caring, what's interesting to me is while they're actually very much in the red right now, it's actually their eyewear that's doing pretty well. I just know myself, I've been buying more eyewear. At Prada Group, Miu Miu is, is really booming. Hermes also doing very well. I know quiet luxury is like a term, but if we're just talking about the brands where quality and wearability are the priorities, Hermes, of course, known for its quality. And even at Caring, we're also seeing Bottega. It's doing better than all the other brands, also known for its quality leather. If you look at Miu Miu, extremely wearable clothing. There are some positive sides to what's happening in the market right now. Yes, there is a slowdown in luxury spending with things like interest rates, with the housing market, with spending power, it's just no longer what it used to be. Overall, luxury has stagnated in many areas. It is actually severely declining. Rishma is doing well, thankfully, because people at this time are more confident in buying luxury jewelry than perhaps buying like a trendy fashion piece. Another thing that I just also want to note is Bernard Arnault has taken a personal interest in Richemont. So Bernard Arnault, LVMH's CEO, has confirmed reports. He stated, I know well the owner, Mr. Johan Rupert of Richemont. We have a good relationship and I told him that I will never do anything against him. And if I bought some shares, it's just my portfolio manager put some shares, but it's a very minor stake and I'm very happy. Arnault iterated, he's done something 
something fantastic with Richemont, with Cartier, with Van Cleef, and I think he's independent and he wants to stay independent and I completely agree on that. We'll see what happens here. Will Bernard Arnault increase his interest in Richemont? We'll see. Is LVMH going to gobble up Richemont as well? I'm just very curious to see what will happen with luxury with a lot of these conglomerates in the next few years. I think we're going to see major changes. Obviously, Caring at the moment isn't performing that well. LVMH is very stagnant at the moment. I do think that sweatshop scandal is going to affect a lot of consumers, but they're the biggest of these conglomerates. It is very possible that they could swallow up some other brands in the next coming years. So yes, anyways, guys, that is my video. Would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me in another one, and I hope to see you in the next one.